in making of constitution what we are discussing till here that is actually uh, just to get overview of history uh, part that is how constitution uh, was prepared what was the uh, background of constitution preparation and in that sense this is supposed to be the second last video of uh, this all because why i am telling second last video because now here we are only discussing about mount batten plan so uh, first important thing after 1935 uh, government of india act of 1935 uh, this act or this uh, mount batten plan was given uh, now in government of india act of 1935 dominion status was given to india in the way that uh, princely states were having some separate consideration but provinces were given in hands of indians directly so that is the most important part in uh, 1935's act now just before this uh, 1947 what was the situation of india i am just revising india was divided totally into two parts at that time a territories directly under british rule and territories indirectly under british rule so territories directly under british rule that means british princely uh, british provinces they were under direct control of britishers indirectly under british rule they were divided into two parts one is princely states and second is tribal regions so uh, they were under indirect rule now uh, further Mountbatten decided to hand over India into two dominations now though I am saying it's Mountbatten but we are aware that actually a huge think tank strategy makers are there and they planned this partition of India by sitting in England only and they sent this type of missions they created a scenario in such a way that India should be divided into many, many, many pieces. Now see the Mountbatten plan. You will come to know why I am telling this. Uh, the features of Mountbatten Act, that Mountbatten plan that is. Uh, it ended the British rule in India and declared India as an independent and sovereign state from 15th August 1947 it is really important because in earlier days Britishers considered that they will give this freedom in June 1948 and going by British history we are aware that if they are saying that on or before June 48 then they will uh, they should actually rule till that but all of a sudden they said no we are giving uh, freedom early so we got this freedom on 15th August 1947 but that is the biggest problem for Pandit Nehru because whatever our date is there, that is 26 January, we have to consider it as independence state that is not obeyed. Now, it provided the partition of India and creation of two independent dominations, that is of India and Pakistan, with the right uh, from, uh, they can be there in British Commonwealth or they can leave British Commonwealth. What is Commonwealth? It is again clearly mentioned British Commonwealth that means British Empire okay the region or the colonies where Britishers ruled that is called as British Commonwealth now here uh, it abolished the office of Viceroy and provided for each domination a governor general that means what was there before 1857 that policy Britishers now rule that uh, there should be a governor general okay and then uh, the governor general was to be appointed by british king on advice of dominion cabinet so it was initial provision his majesty's government in britain was to have no responsibility with respect to government of india or pakistan so this is something tricky that uh, governor general should be appointed by British king but having no responsibility so we are giving you this is governor general 
like that. Now, uh, it empowered the constituent assemblies of two dominations to frame and adopt any constitution for their respective nations and to repeal any act of British, uh, British Parliament including the Independence Act itself. Do whatever you are now totally free. So like that you have to prepare your own constitution. But till what? Till that, that means when independent constitution will be there in the uh, enforcement, till that India, that means Pakistan also, should be ruled according to Act of 1935. All the provinces should be considered as according to Act of 1935. That is the important thing. Now, it abolished the office of Secretary of State and transferred functions of Secretary of State for Commonwealth affairs. It proclaimed the lapse of British paramount uh, policy over Indian princely states and treaty relations with the tribal areas from August 47, 15th August 47. Now it is very very important that Britishers wanted to make pieces of India as many as possible. So they say that whatever our treaties were there with this tribal area, these princely states, they are going to end on 15th August 47. It granted freedom to Indian princely states either to join dominion of India or dominion of Pakistan or to remain independent. So, or to remain independent means what Britishers were interested in making many pieces. Say, I am not talking anything which is abstract, which is practical one. If you are observing Balkan Treaty or Balkan Territory, try to recollect a situation before First World War. Actually, Balkan Territory was under control of Turkey. That is the Ottoman Empire's part. But Britishers particularly wanted that Balkans should not unite. Russia uh, at that time was interested in controlling entire Balkan. Austria was also considering that they should control entire Balkan. But Britishers wanted that there must be pieces of this Balkan nation, as many as pieces. And now go through map of Europe. Observe what is Balkan territory to the uh, western side of Black Sea and to the eastern side of Germany, Italy and Germany. To the eastern side of that Italy and Germany, whatever territories are there, they, that small nations like Albania, Croatia, uh, Bulgaria, Yugoslavia, like that, whatever the nations, they are called as Balkan nation. So today also so many fragments are there. They kept themselves as UK, that is United Kingdom consisting of Wales, Scotland, England and Ireland forcefully. But they wanted that world should divide it into fragments. So here also in case of India, they were interested in making as many fragments of India as possible. So officially they carried out two, that is India and Pakistan. But now uh, let them do. Like that they were saying that uh, we are giving freedom. Now it provided for the governance uh, of each dominion. Uh, and provinces that is according to 1935 act uh, then it deprived British monarch of his right to veto bills or ask for reservations uh, of certain bills and his approval etc but keep in mind uh, if we are saying that uh, he is not having any more power obviously this is not need to be mentioned it uh, it is designated the Governor General of India and Provincial Governors as constitutional heads of the state and they were made to act on advice of respective council of ministers in all matters. So because governors were appointed by king, it is mandatory by them, uh, he designated the Governor General of India and the Provincial Governors as constitutional heads of the state. They were made to act on the advice of respective council of ministers in all matters. Now, uh, the most important thing, it dropped the title of Emperor of India from royal titles of King of England. Now, it is uh, actually, uh, we have to understood that once they say that uh, we are leaving India, then these all things are just nominal. It is not that important. Now, uh, the most important, 
it discontinued the appointment to civil services and reservations of post by the secretary of states for india the members of civil services appointed before 15th august 47 would continue to enjoy all benefits that they were entitled till that time so this is 1947's government of india act uh, sorry 1947's uh, act that is we are calling as a uh, mount battle plan and with that uh, at midnight between 14th and 15th august this uh, plan was implemented and we got freedom so this is now second last lecture before we are actually starting constitution now it will be the last lecture and then onwards we are starting out constitution thanks for observing this video